Hey everyone, Dr. Dan here. I um, got some requests from my good students in the GIM, Games and Interactive uh, Media and Mobile Technology program at BSU to uh, update the setup for a VR environment, virtual reality environment in Unity uh, for the 20. 19 version of Unity and the 2019 version of Oculus Rift. So what we're going to be doing is setting up an Oculus virtual reality environment in which we can move around and we can use our hands to grab and move objects around in virtual reality. We're going to do that in Unity. Um, what I have, and I'm just going to, going to start from scratch with this uh, so that you can build your own virtual reality environment. Uh, we'll, I'll show you how to make some custom controls, so how to do some things with the Oculus controllers on top of um, on top of the hey everyone uh, Unity nor or Oculus normal controls. So if you push like A, B, move the joystick around, we'll uh, talk about how to do some custom controls for that. Uh, I'm going to be using. Uh, normal Oculus Rift, so not the Quest, but this should all work for the Quest too. Uh, I may test this out in a later tutorial. Just uh, make sure you just make sure you switch your build to Android if you're developing for Oculus Quest. Okay, so brand new Unity project, ready to go. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just open up my Asset Store window. We need to go get Oculus integration. Let's give that a second to connect. <clears throat> there we go. So search for assets. And there we go. You can see I have been doing this. Uh, that's what we want, Oculus integration. And let's import it. We'll take just a second. I'm going to pause the video while this is happening. Um, actually, while this is happening, there is a step we can do. Uh, so it is important at some point to go to Oculus uh, com and set up a developer account. So to do that, uh, you probably want to click over here. We scroll down here, developer center. Uh, you can set up a developer account with just your email. So the yeah, Oculus Rift S is what I'll be developing with. Um, once you have a developer account, you're going to want to log in and uh, go to the developer dashboard, which I believe is now in manage over here on the left. Yep, it is. Okay, so dashboard.oculus.com should also take you there. And you're going to want to create a new app, give it a random name. Actually, that was kind of cool. There it is, my mind is their default name. I like that. Um, we're developing for Oculus Rift, so we're going to select that. Notice that uh, Gear and Go were different. And then we're going to want to grab this app ID so that our avatar and controllers work smoothly in Unity. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste it down here. So I have it. Alright, let's see how Unity's doing. So, uh, Oculus Integrations is a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I... let's see. So let's keep all the scripts. Uh, we definitely want to keep Avatar. I'm not going to be using Lip Sync. But let's keep the scripts for lip sync because they're not very uh, compression. They're not very heavy on memory. Um, we might want to keep the plugins as well and prefabs. We don't need the scenes, but we would want the uh, scripts for the scenes. Okay. Uh, you, you can just import everything if you want. Uh, I'm just being a little picky here. Um, so I don't want everything in platform. Uh, let's see. So we can have these scripts. Um, for V, 
be our voice chat. Let's just keep the scripts. And there we go. A whole bunch of scripts there. Uh, we definitely want all of sample framework. We don't need all of spatializer. So let's um, get rid of the plugins here, the scenes here. Uh, let's keep the scripts. For voice mod, uh, we don't need all of that. But let's keep the prefabs and the uh, scripts. And let's keep all of VR. Let's import all that. If we have any problems with that import, uh, we, can, we can fix them just diving into the code and uh, seeing what dependencies we, we left out with that kind of pick and choose way of importing things. It's, just a, very, it's a very big package and I don't want uh, absolutely everything. So I'm going to pause it while it imports all this stuff. Okay, so uh, we've got some obsolete APIs. Um, we're going to go ahead and update. By the way, I am using uh, the version of Unity I'm using is 2019.3, I believe. Uh, I'll double check that in just a second. And, all right, so it's going running again. I'm gonna pause and let this run for a bit. Okay, so Oculus Utilities detected a new OVR plugin, and it's asking us if we can restart. I'm gonna go ahead and let it do that. video again while this restarts. Uh, and while we're waiting on that to restart, I thought it would be nice to talk about Unity Hub for just a second. Um, this is something that's absolutely essential for Unity development uh, these days because, um, <clears throat> as you can see with the title of my video here, um, where the, the way that you develop the specific pieces of code that you run changes from version to version of Unity. So Unity Hub actually allows you to install multiple versions of Unity and then run your uh, apps with a specific version of Unity. Uh, okay, so get Unity Hub if you don't already. Um, the version of Unity I'm using, as you can see here, is 2019.3 and uh, it's the alpha, I think they're up to beta now, but so as cutting edge as I could get it um, at this time. So I'm gonna close my asset store tab and let's just open a sample framework scene here to see if we have any errors with, uh, with VR. So I'm gonna open VR, go to scenes, and let's just open controller, the first scene, controller mod modules. second. There we go. All right. So great. Uh, this actually has some stuff that we're going to want to take a look at because I believe the camera rig has some does has some controller scripts uh, and do those controller scripts have uh, let's see here do they have they have animators now I'm wondering if they have like grabbable they do not okay anyway uh, I'm just gonna run this and jump into a rift back and let's switch so in game you should be able to see after uh, oculus actually starts what I'm seeing so down here in the game window make that a bit bigger for everyone uh, so I am actually not being transported Play again and run this one more time. Okay, so now in Oculus.
notice I'm in the scene, I'm able to move around and I can see my controllers. Um, they are a bit off because I didn't do um, tracking, but that's okay. All right. Um, so cool, everything works the way we would expect and that's good. All right, so now I'm gonna switch to uh, a new scene. Let's go to scenes. We have the sample scene with nothing in it by default. And I'm gonna set up a virtual reality environment here. Um, so first thing we can do is uh, make a, something to walk on. So let's make a plane. Um, and I'm actually going to go to the asset store. Let's get some, some interesting stuff to, uh, to look at in VR here. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Maybe like environments. And let's uh, filter. Blacksmith environment is free. Um, that looks like a nice low poly environment. Or you could do stylized nature. Um, let's do a low poly one. Kind of like the way that looks. Uh, so I'm going to start that download. And let's import it. So this is just an example for uh, how you might make a, a more interesting virtual reality environment. Um, let's just take a look at some demo scenes here real quick. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> the uh, demo scenes seem to be missing. We definitely have some prefabs. Uh, okay, so that's probably enough for us. Um, we could drag a tree in, maybe. Let's uh, scale this plane up a bit by maybe like five and five. So now we have a tree. Um, is this grass? Terrain is, all right, let's put some terrain here. Uh, let's reset the transform on that. Um, and ooh, actually, this, yeah, that's fine. Let's reset the transform. And then let's um, push this up to five and five. And, ooh, that's kind of big. Uh, maybe like two, two, and three, three. Okay, so our terrain's gonna extend a little bit further. I'm just gonna pull that up. Let's take a look at this. Um, so we have a mesh collider. So we'll be kind of uh, inside that terrain, but that's okay. And let's duplicate this tree a couple times. Drag them around. So we have some, some interesting trees all around us. And you get the idea, right? We could put some flowers in, um, but for now, let's let's stick with terrain and trees, and let's build out our virtual reality environment. So I'm going to create an empty game object, and I'm just going to call this environment, and I'm going to pull like terrain and trees into that and just to keep things organized Oops. just no <laughs> having a little bit of trouble here stack those in there and let's even make another empty game object here and call this tree 
these and just further organize this down. Okay. Uh, cool. So now we have a plane which is going to hold our player. Um, and so we need a player, right? So let's uh, go to Oculus. Let's go to VR prefabs and they have a OVR player controller ready to go for us. So I'm just going to pull that player controller in, pull it up a bit for its starting place, back a bit. And let's take a look at what that looks like in virtual reality. So, whoops, there we go. So I am snapping as I move with a quick rotation. As you can see, I am in a very interesting low poly environment. And uh, because we have a collider, I'm actually getting the, I'm walking on top of the terrain. So that is great. That's all working the way we would expect. Okay, so um, just that simple to get movement. And, uh, <clears throat> You get movement um, with your player controller. But now, like, if we wanted to be able to move stuff around, um, let's see here. Let's put a few rocks into this scene. So, in environment, um, I'm going to make another empty game object, and I'm going to call this rocks. And um, I'm just going to drag some, some rocks into our scene here. So let's put one there. Let's put one here. Let's, this one looks nice. Maybe like right there. And that one can go here. This one can go a little rock. So now we've got some boulders, um, and I'm just going to duplicate these a couple times and uh, move them around so that we have some, uh, some variation here. Okay, that's probably enough rocks. Um, so now I'm going to uh, grab all the rocks that I just made. Uh, control selecting these, in case you're wondering. Uh, and I'm going to pull them into rocks. And while I have them all... Oops, didn't actually go into rocks. Pull them into rocks. While I have them all selected, I'm going to add a OVR grabbable components to all these rocks, and I'm going to um, add, uh, and then let's take a look at them. So for the OVR grabbable to work, we're also going to need a rigid body. Let's see if those all fall through the floor. I just want to make sure that they're interacting with the collider the way I would expect. Good. There they are. Oh, no. They started to fall. Look at that. There they go. All right. So um, to fix that, let's... So we could uncheck use gravity. Um, but 
let's just add a box collider to all of these. Let's see if that fixes it. Uh, okay. That's kind of a cool effect. I wonder if we can get that. Let's pull these up a bit and uh, it'll be like a falling rocks <laughs> effect. So here they go. Rocks are falling all around me. Cool. Alright. Um, so that's all good. Um, so now we have a OVR player controller. I'm going to add an avatar to that so that I'll have hands. Before I do that, I'm going to go to Oculus, Avatars, Edit Settings. And you'll see we need a Rift ID there. So. Open my um, here we go. VR. <clears throat> oh, getting some slow, slow action on my computer here. So I'm gonna grab that Rift ID. It's probably still in my clipboard, but that's okay. Paste it in there and there, and then I'm gonna go to Oculus uh, Platform Edit Settings, and I'm gonna place it in here. And Good. Um, and now I'm going to go to Avatar and Content Prefabs, and I'm going to pull a local avatar right into my player controller. Uh, all right, that looks good. Now let's run it. See if I can see my hands. Okay, so I can see my hands. They are really far down, and they're kind of, as I move them, they're kind of moving into me. Uh, so we can fix those two things by first moving avatar up about 0.4, and second, maybe our player controller, uh, there is a setting here, uh, HDMI rotates Y, which I'm going to uncheck. Let's run that. Good, my hands are about where I want them, and I can move towards stuff. My tracking is really bad right now. Um, so now let me move, and, but you'll see, um, I just, I don't, I, I'm hitting a collider kind of far out. Um, and my hands just kind of go through, so that's not great. So, um, what we need to do is on our uh, local avatar, let's take a look at that. Um, let's see here. Let, why don't we, in our OVR camera rig, in tracking spaces, left hand anchor, um, I'm going to add a component. OVR. So your left hand anchor is your actual position of your hand. The avatar is just kind of a visual representation of that. Um, I'm going to add OVR wrapper. And that's going to add a rigid body by default. I'm going to uncheck use gravity because I don't want my hands to fall down. For the parent transform, um, I'm going to actually pull in OVR camera rig. And for the controller, I'm going to select left touch because we're in the left. And for the grip transform, I'm going to pull this anchor just right into itself. And that's it. Do the same thing for right hand. So add component, OVR grabber, uncheck use gravity. For <coughs> grip transform, pull in itself. And for parent transform, we pull in OVR camera rig. And controller, we want right touch. And that should be good. We should now be able to move the rocks. Ideally. But let's see. Alright, I'm going to uh, just move the mic out of the way of my tracking spaces, back a bit, and hopefully, so I'm getting some lag with my hands because I never really set up tracking. 
you see this snapping that I'm doing as I rotate? We can, uh, we can modify that as well. So if I reach out and try and grab these, looks like I got something. Okay. So not working yet is, I believe, the moral of the story. So we're missing something. Yeah, so I forgot a essential component here, box collider, and that actually needs to be a trigger. Uh, that's the left hand, we're going to do the same thing for the right hand. Box collider. And let's select trigger. Alright, let's try this again. So here I am in VR, the rocks are falling, wow. Precariously balanced, if I've ever seen it. All right, and you can see that I've grabbed it, but I'm flying through the ground. It immediately pushed me through the ground. So, um, a couple of things. One thing is that the um, box colliders on the stones are huge. Let's take a look at one of them. So you can see they extend out a lot farther than we might want. Um, so. If we, uh, we'd have to edit these one by one, but uh, basically it's the uh, size here that we'd want to scale down so that you have to actually reach right there now. Um, if we make it like two, we've got something, we've got a bit more like we would want, uh, but you'd still have to kind of get in the middle of the rock. So you get, you get the idea. Um, for now, I'm going to leave these box colliders huge and just be aware that I can grab them uh, at a distance. Right? So when my box collider on my hands, which is, isn't is huge, but it's a little bigger than my hand, so we could shrink that down as well. When that touches the box collider on one of these rocks, like right here, that's where we'll grip it. Alright, um, the other thing, and, and that can all be adjusted then. I'm not going to do that now, but you, you saw how to do that yourself. Um, the other thing is, this is a much bigger issue, when we grab anything that has a box collider, our OBR player controller actually has a box collider associated with it, and what happens is, these two box colliders push apart, so the thing we're grabbing in our player push apart, and Unity doesn't, their physics, the physics engine doesn't know what to do, so it pushes us up or down through the floor. Um, with force. So to get around that, we're going to add layers to these. So I'm going to tag this whole player controller with a layer um, called player, which I'm going to make. Whoa, stop. I'm actually going to make another layer called objects. So, a little complicated here, we're going to tag this whole player as player and change all our children, but we don't want our hands to be tagged as part of the player, because we want these to interact with the stones, we just don't want the rest of our player to shoot through the ground. So I'm going to tag these as default and change children. Just double check. Good. Okay. This is still tagged as player. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> the other thing we need to do now is let's tag everything in rocks as layer grabbable. All the children. Um, actually, rocks itself we want is it's that's just a. This is just a placeholder object, and I want the uh, children to be tagged to rocks. Those are all grabbable. Uh, the empty object that is all of them is not. That's the kind of 
thing I want. Um, finally, we need to, let's save it, and let's go to uh, edit for project settings, physics, here, and then um, we're going to uncheck, we're going to make it so our player cannot interact with grabbable, but remember our hands can, right? We could also uncheck player and player, but and grabbable and grabbable if we wanted, so that uh, the rocks kind of fell through each other, but um, I like the way it's working, so. And that's it. Um, so now, let's do a test run. these rocks at a distance, just like I just have, and got it, right, uh, cool, throw it, and it's got kind of normal physics, there, it's interacting with the trees box collider, but there we go, if I bounce it off the ground, I can make it fly out, you'll notice that I can't interact with trees, because we haven't made those graphical, but with rocks, I certainly Dreamlike gravity set settings here. But pretty cool. Okay. Uh, so that's how to set up a virtual reality environment. Um, oh. Let's see what we haven't done yet. So I promised to build our player. We did that. We didn't get any compiler errors. Oh, that's okay. We got the avatar working. That's all done. Um, we downloaded some cool assets and made them interactable. That's done too. Let's add some custom controls now. Um, so, I'm going to, uh, let's go back to the asset store and, um, let's look for, uh, let's search for Search for something free. Assets. Ooh, there are two free assets. Okay. Free results. And fire and spell effects. Cool. Alright, so I'm going to import these. And that's happening on player controller. Let's add a script called custom. Explosions. Prefabs. Fireball. Sweet. Okay. Uh, this, by the way, is bad practice. We should. Technically, make a copy um, and import everything into an empty project to make sure it works in a separate project, uh, and then bring that separate project into this project and make sure nothing breaks, and then go back to our original project. But for the interest of time, I'm uh, just uh, just chancing that nothing's gonna nothing's gonna break as I import these 
new assets. Meteor, how about that? Let's just drag that in. Um, so we have a meteor, and it doesn't have gravity. Uh, it has a collider on it. Let's see if that moves around or just kind of stays still. There we go, that's pretty cool. actually look like. Uh, okay, neat. Um, so Meteor is a nice little prefab we can use. Um, an OVR player controller in custom controls now. Let's just edit our, this script. Object. Let's do pub, uh, in above our start class. Let's do public game object meteor. So we have a, a link to that, and then um, let's just have a. <clears throat> let's see. We don't need anything in start, but in update we can say. If OVR uh, dot let's see, OVR input dot um, and then we can see here button OVR input I don't actually remember what OVR input looks like. So let's just Google it here and go to the developer center, see how we can use that. Uh, OVR input.get is what we want. We have an example of the button, so they do. Cool. All right, that's the one we want, but not X. Um, go back to Visual Studio and let's just paste this below. So we actually want get down. We are input dot get down, which is going to get the current down state. Turns true if the button was pressed. And then OVR input raw button A. Let's get rid of that semicolon. Let's just grab all this. We can actually delete that now. And I'm gonna paste that in here. So we're gonna get we're gonna return true as soon as that button, the A button is pressed down. And if we do return true, let's call a method called fire meteor. Write that method here. Uh, void fire meteor. And what we're going to do is instantiate. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's instantiate uh, meteor. And then let's. Did meteor have a rigid body? Let's just check here. Does we don't have to add one? I think it did. No. Yeah, it does. It has a rigid body with mass, but no gravity. Okay, so we can then just use the rigid body to push it around. So um, let's say RB equals. Oops. RB equals get uh, equals yeah get. Actually, we don't want to instantiate. Yeah, we do. We want to instantiate meteor. Um, and that should make a copy there. Uh, and let's just give this a link, like m equals or meteor. 
meteor. Close. Uh, meteor, and then let's say RB equals get component. And then we can just do RB dot velocity equal equals, let's just have a speed variable. And we'll set that in the editor. Float speed equals, I don't know, 3F or something. Uh, okay. Velocity equals, and then um, let's do uh, meteor dot forward, meteor dot transform dot forward times speed. So we'll get the forward transform of the meteor after we instantiate it, uh, and it should by default just instantiate to the parent, and then we'll move it forward by speed. Okay. So the whole point of this is uh, just custom controls in VR with like neat looking things. Um, and I'm not, uh, you know, this isn't a tutorial on how to go through uh, random, random prefab code. Um, so all I wanna do is uh, set some kind of object. We could have used like a cube or a sphere by default, but some kind of object I wanna send flying forward whenever the A button is pressed, so. Meteor, let's just drag that in to the game object. Let's delete this one from our scene and let's run it. And I'll see you in VR. All right. So get my hands right. There we go. Um, if I hit A now, there is my meteor. And as you can see, it is kind of locked to something over there. So it's uh, just getting instantiated. I believe that's probably the center of the um, the center of the game. So um, let's see. Let's um, make the parent transform this. That's it. Okay. Uh, that should do. That should fix that problem where we're not, where we're instantiating right in the middle of the game rather than um, relative to ourselves. So I'll let that import, and I'll see you back in VR. Air uh, fire collision forward. And that be, let's take a look at meteor again. And fire collision forward. Let's just remove that. run it again. I'm just going to keep my eye on the console here to look for errors real quick. Good. No errors. Some chatter from OVR, but that's it. Um, okay, so let me switch 
position to be R. Whoa. That's something strange going on there. And much better. So it's coming right out of the center of my transform. And uh, there's no collision detection on this, so it's just moving through stuff. But if we wanted, we could kind of set things on fire. Anyway, super cool. Uh, neat little VR world we've made. Well, that is super interesting, too. These meteors are apparently, like, rotating around me once they're, once they're launched. So, um, neat stuff. They have some kind of angular velocity script, it would appear. Uh, that's not something I wrote. That's just um, their, the code that they came with. Anyway, um, so that'd be fun to play around with as a virtual reality. I hope that was helpful. Um, that was the VR setup for uh, 2019 Unity and Oculus. Um, I'm using version 0.3, but you can probably use any version that you want. And how to get assets from the asset store, um, potentially assets with a lot of scripts on them, and uh, get them working in VR. So have fun with that, and I will I guess you will see me next time.